good day. This is Evelyn from Airways Africa Radio and TV Network. Thank you for tuning into our station. We, we so love to talk to you today concerning the tribes, the different tribes that we have, not just in our own country, South Africa, but also in Canada and international as well. And today I'm so privileged to have a special guest speaker, uh, Cherry LeBlanc. Uh, Cherry, can you just introduce yourself, as tell, just explain to people where you come from and uh, your type of work that you're doing in Canada, please. Sure. It's good to be with you, Avril. Uh, I'm uh, from Canada. I'm a First Nations person from Canada. Uh, indigenous peoples in Canada are uh, grouped in three major groupings, First Nations, Inuit people from the very far north, and Métis. And we're a First Nations people. We're a Mi'kmaq tribe from the eastern coast of Canada, where I work among our people doing indigenous theological education and leadership wow. development and training. My goodness. So, so you, in actual fact, you have actually a... Uh, is it a university, a college, or a school, or what do you call uh, it? It's called the North American Institute for Indigenous Theological Studies, okay. and we established it 11 years ago to uh, look at theological and biblical and missiological concerns from a Native North American perspective, from I an indigenous that. perspective. Yes. And over the years, it's developed from hosting symposiums each year yeah. on a, a variety of topics and publishing an annual journal to offering graduate and postgraduate theological and biblical missiological education. That's wonderful. Uh, Jerry, tell me, I've seen you also uh, at the conference that we're coming from now, the All Nations Conference. Mm -hmm. It's an All Nations Conference that's taking place right now in your own hometown, Mitchell's Plain, Cape Town. So I don't know why aren't you coming? You should come there. And we've got lovely people from different race, different tribes, different tongues. Just come and meet them and know them. Jerry, to go further with the, the question there of, of your, um, uh, your, your, your ministry, explain to them, you know, because you're also a man of God that's got a church. Is it a church or is it a... Um, a well, I don't, I don't currently pastor a church. Oh, I, ha I have in years past been pastor of a church, but I haven't pastored for some years. I'm uh, primarily focused on teaching and training uh, First Nations and other indigenous peoples in, uh, again, biblical studies and theology. Yeah. So I, I am the chair and the director of the institute. We have uh, 12 faculty who work with us, um, eight of whom are First Nations uh, people uh, uh, who have uh, advanced degrees. Uh, they either have a doctoral degree or are just finishing a doctoral degree. And they work together with me to uh, offer uh, uh, theological training programs. Yes. We also have a, a, a program uh, called My People International that works mm -hmm. uh, with, with us um, and they focus on grassroots training and leadership development dealing with issues that First Nations and Inuit and Métis peoples in Canada and the United States mm -hmm. have wrestled with as a consequence of colonialism and so we deal with the aftermath of colonialism on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the concerns range from uh, similar uh, perhaps to here, a yeah. uh, large degree of, of uh, substance abuse that uh, our young people and, and adults are involved in, yeah. uh, through to a variety of kinds of abuse that they've struggled with because of the colonial experience. Yeah. And our programs uh, help people overcome the effects of, uh, of those things. Um, okay, that's great. In addition to that, we do yeah. biblical training uh, yes. at the grassroots level as well. Okay. And then my son Matt, who is with me here at this conference, yeah. and, uh, yes, and in fact in the studio here, yeah. uh, leads a program called I Emergence, or Indigenous Emergence, okay. focusing on the, the needs of youth and young adults and how to bring youth and young adults into uh, a, an intergenerational experience of what it means to walk out their faith as indigenous young people in their context, in their culture, yes. uh, exploring what it means to be indigenous and yeah. followers of the Jesus way at the same time. Wonderful. So you, what I like what you said now, to, you know, you're, you're like blending the two in. You're not just stick to the cultural side. But you like uh, also bring out the, the true gospel because I've, I've also listened to your preaching and uh, so that's why I ask if you have a church in Canada and that uh, I, I love what I've heard what you were uh, preaching about and that but uh, uh, which is also good to know that because uh, the, the have you got a translated Bible in, in your language uh, of the, the tribe 
Yes. Um, most of our tribes, now there are, there are just under 500 tribes in North America, in Canada and the United States. Um, our tribe, the Mi'kmaq people, we're just around 30,000 yeah. in number uh, total. The largest tribe in Canada is about 250,000, that's yeah. the Cree people. The largest tribe in the United States is the Navajo people, they're about also 250 or 260,000 people. And so there are many different languages. In fact, in North America there are over 270 uh, indigenous languages currently being spoken. Uh, ours is but one of those, yeah. and the scripture hasn't been translated into all of those languages by yes. any means, but it has been translated into our language, okay, um, and uh, so we do have the scriptures, at least the New Testament, we don't have yeah. the Old Testament, you know, but we do old, have the at least, New Testament yeah. in our language, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. The, the New Testament is very important because it's all about Jesus, right? Eh? To let them know that Jesus is alive in our life. Well it is, yeah. but, but even as you say that, uh, Avril, it's important to understand that in the first 200 years of the church, they didn't yeah. have the New Testament. They preached from the Old Testament. Oh, yes, that's and a fact. They, and they preached yeah. Jesus yeah. from the Old Testament. <laughs> and part of what right. we're doing today is to say to people in the indigenous world, uh, you weren't discovered by God when European people came. Yes. yes. That actually God knew where you were because he created you where you were. Yeah. And he placed you where you were for the purposes of God. Yes. And, and that there is an experience that indigenous people have of God being among them that we want to uh, excavate okay. from them. And okay. we want to explore with them mm -hmm. uh, to I help overcome the myth yes. that we were discovered by God who yes. came with Europeans. I see that. Um, and so, our Old Testament, mm -hmm. if you will, we, we, we have an Old Testament kind of experience of God. Mm -hmm. And not unlike what we would read in the Old Testament, sometimes we got it right, sometimes we got it terribly wrong. Okay. Sometimes we followed in a good way, looking for, seeking after, trying to comprehend what it meant to be yes. uh, created beings in this earth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we fouled it up really badly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true in, in yeah. the entirety of the earth. Okay. Um, so we want to say, yes, the New Testament tells us of the person and the work and the life and the teaching and the death and resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But that New Testament is overlaid on our Old Testament okay. experience. And it helps us come to fulfillment and mm -hmm. completion as people that God has created. That's right, yeah, in the yeah. beginning, yes. That's yeah. right. Yes, in the beginning, I, when God gave me the vision of uh, Aries Africa Radio and TV Network, He said, Avril, I'm the unlimited God. I'm the creator of all nations. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, just be plain and simple. Just, just, just use one verse of scripture that, the, that, that they can know. In Genesis 1, 1, where it says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And it's so important to know that God has created. In that same uh, chapter of the very first book of, Bible, of the Bible that we have, and uh, I believe that the Torah is also the, uh, very similar because I, I have done uh, an interview also with a Jewish uh, lady that's also a minister, very, very good sister mm -hmm. in the Lord of Mind. She's in the United Kingdom now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very connected and uh, we've done a, 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 the, a, the Jewish nations. And uh, what, she, uh, what she mentioned, what I like what she mentioned, just to come back to the Bible, the God of uh, the Creator of all nations, because that is a, the, the topic, the main topic that we actually are, I want you to, to focus mm -hmm. on today, mm -hmm. to leave, uh, you know, to leave a, a message for, for the viewers out there, especially here in the Western Cape. Because uh, I have interviewed also Corey uh, uh, Tri and uh, the indigenous leaders, mm -hmm. and they, they were telling us that the Bible of the Koi, uh, Koi is not Koi San. The Koi San is a, a right. people that is in the yep. uh, uh, um, Kalahari. Mm -hmm. They are the people that are called the herders, and Afrikaans herders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they are the people that were like, uh, they, they, they hunters. They right. don't count. They still, they, up till now, they live in this generation. The, the more modern generation, they still live like that. And my next question to you, is it the, still the same there with the Indian? I'm sorry that I call it the Indian people, but that is what we used to see in, uh, you know, in the cinema of the red Indians. We used to call it the red Indians, because that is what was uh, printed in our mind, you know, when I was a youngster. And I used to love the red Indians, you know, I was like always uh, watching the movies, the cowboy movies of that year. 
And but it was good ones was John Wayne. I don't know if you know that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was good cowboy movies. But yeah. to come back on and say, can you just explain to the people out there more about your tribal uh, uh, nation in uh, um, in Canada? Yeah. Sure. Were you were you born in Canada yourself? Or, uh, yes. Yes, I was born in Canada. I was uh, uh, the Mi'kmaq people uh, Mi from. Mi'kmaq. 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 Mm -hmm. Some people say Mi'kmaq, but uh, okay. that's that's uh, uh, that's not quite right. We say Mi'kmaq. Uh, and uh, the Mi'kmaq people uh, are in the eastern part of Canada. Uh, we have existed there, according to our understanding, for thousands of years. Um, uh, we've been in that land, and uh, uh, we are about we number about thirty thousand people today. Uh, in 29 communities, um, so there are not that many in each of the communities, but we, we number about 30,000 people. Uh, we have our own language. Uh, in fact, three different dialects of our language currently exist. Uh, the dialect we speak uh, is is called the Listebush dialect, um, and uh, uh, the customs and culture of our people is still very alive. Um, uh, I mean, you heard my son and I uh, singing uh, one of our songs in our language with our instrument, which is the, which is the drum, uh, the hand drum. And uh, so our culture is alive, the language is very alive in all three dialects, um, being taught in, in the schools that are on our communities, okay. uh, etc. Um, yes. So we have an active culture. Uh, when my wife and I were married, I've been married 40 years, uh, we, we go into our 40th year uh, in just a couple of weeks. Wow. And uh, when my wife and I were first married, part of my living was earned trapping, uh, okay. trapping uh, for furs. Uh, exactly. People might read of that in the history books, okay. you know, fur trapping in the fur era and so on in North okay. America. And so I earned part of my living at the time doing that. Okay. Our children learned to, to, um, to hunt. So my son, who again is here in the studio with us, uh, Matt, learned to hunt at an early age. Okay. And uh, so we hunted uh, for for meat, uh, for okay. game and so forth uh, over the years. Yes. Uh, and, and so many of our cultural practices continue as they were, yes. uh, modified only by the contemporary environment that we find ourselves in, yeah. uh, but otherwise are, are, are still very much in use. Isn't. Mm -hmm. So you do, you allow to certain areas in your country to do hunting as well? Well, we can hunt just about anywhere we like. Uh, that's uh, part of our treaty process is okay. uh, if you're a First Nations person, uh, an Inuit person or Métis person, you, you are allowed to hunt, well not allowed, it's our right because yes. it's our land. Yes, I see that. It's, I it's, see that. It's, uh, the, the colonial people came from Europe, but they yeah. came to our land. That's right. This yes. is our it's land. The same thing what happened. It's our homeland. Uh, yes. We didn't come from somewhere else. That's yeah, our, that's so, right. so we hunt in our land mm -hmm. as we like. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, that's part of uh, a treaty understanding we have with the newcomers. <laughs> okay, yeah. right. yeah. And, and, and uh, just to make it more interesting to the viewers out there, what type of uh, animals do you hunt? Is it like uh, for meat now? You know, well, we, we um, traditionally for our family, uh, we hunted what was available, and for the most part, that was white tailed deer. Okay. Uh, we, we have hunted bear, black bear uh, for meat as well, elk. Black bear? Mm -hmm, black bear. And how does the meat taste? Very wild? Or? No, oh, no, no. No, it's very, very nice tasting. Because right. yeah. yeah. we, we're living in the coast <laughs> land, as you can see, we're more fish people. Yes. And we love it. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the koi, sorry, I'm coming in here now with our tribes because I know a little bit of it. The koi people, the koi koi people are the people that are actually the so called other people. So there's somewhere, somehow, a lot of mixture in our, if I say mixture, I don't mean to uh, uh, press us down as a rainbow nation out there, but I just want to say that there's a lot of, uh, like my mom, she, uh, a dad was a Hollander, and that's a, it's a white person, mm -hmm. you know, it's a white, my, mm -hmm. my grandpa was a white man, and my mom was a white woman, but she mm -hmm. married colored and we are all called colored, you can make a colored mm -hmm. yep. uh, sure. man, and uh, I mean my dad was a handsome man. Yeah. <laughs> Close to the end of our, uh, you know, family are very important, you know, in our culture, uh, you know, South Africans and the Khoi, Khoi people, indigenous uh, people, the leaders in Africa, we are very friendly, we like coming together, we like gatherings as well, mm -hmm. and we like to encourage one another. 
and uh, see that we're brothers and sisters in Christ as well, then it flows actually much better, as, as your son just mentioned, about our identity in Christ, you know, who we are and that. It's so, it's so important. Uh, but you as a, as a father yourself, as, you know, of children and that, and also a father of, of, of uh, spiritual children as well, what can you tell the viewers on there concerning family, you know, how important it is, uh, not just cultural as well, but, you know, in general, and especially out of the Word of God, you know, from in the, through the eyes of God. Well, so. well, one of the things I talked about here at the conference, as one of the speakers in the conference, and, and my son Matt was, was also a uh, speaker here at the conference, and will be speaking this evening at the, at the uh, youth and young adult uh, part of the conference. One of the things I talked about was, was one of the errors that I made as, as, a, as a father, and a father who had entered ministry and yeah. who had come to faith uh, in, in the early part of my wife's and my marriage, yeah. um, was that I assumed that the church and the work of the church took precedence over my family. In other words, I assumed that because now I was a follower of the Jesus way and I was called to full-time ministry, mm -hmm. vocational ministry, that. that my family should take second and third place to the ministry. And that's not correct. No, definitely not. Uh, uh, our responsibility is first to restore our relationship with yes, God, as, right. as, as not just as individuals, mm -hmm. uh, but but as individuals, families, and communities. Mm -hmm. The call of God in our lives is a call of God to all of us, as yeah. uh, both individual and collective. So, if you think of it in terms of our hand, mm -hmm. we all have individual fingerprints. Yeah. Uh, they're all unique. Yes. There's no two fingerprints on the face of the earth that are the same. Yes, I see that. Um, and yet, if you were to take that finger, mm -hmm. any one of them, or the thumb, and cut it off from the mm -hmm. hand, it will yeah. die. I see that. It can't survive on its own. Yeah. There's individuality in yes. each finger and each thumb. That is true. But they require the whole hand That's and right. the rest of the body to provide nourishment and sustenance. That's right. And sometimes we think of ministry as just me, mm -hmm. separate. Mm -hmm. um, but, but God calls us to, um, to, to a gospel that wants to transform not just the individual. In mm -hmm. fact, if you really look at scripture carefully, mm -hmm. the individual's transformation is in community, mm -hmm. is in the family, yeah. is in the community. That That's where the transformation right. really occurs. Yeah. And so I got it really wrong. And I got it wrong because that's really what the church has, yeah. has bought into, yeah. is, is the idea that... Uh, we have to go out and convert people. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, we're not the people who can do the conversion. It's yes. the Holy Spirit who brings conviction, and That's conviction right. brings transformation. That's right. And what better way to bring conviction than to live lives ourselves that are yeah. worthy of, of the uh, call of God in Christ in our yeah. own. So, I got it wrong. Yes. And it's been really these years my son and I have wrestled to get it put back together by understanding one another. Yes. Family's always been important to us as indigenous people. Right. It's been central. Relationship has always been yes, central. Very much. And what, what I allowed was for somebody else's understanding yeah. to overshadow uh -huh. what we understood yeah. historically, yeah. I, I think, as, as people. So family and community are, are, ought to be at the center of what we do. And it yeah. ought to be our relationship with God, our relationship with our family yes. and our spouses, Thanks. and Thanks. then... And only then yeah. do we think about the ministry and the work of the church. Right, right. That is so it's right. got to be in that sequence, yes, that, that order. So right. And when we get that right, then I think God brings blessing, as that He has so with, right. with uh, my son Matt and I. Uh, when I learned to get that right, mm. uh, it, it, or at least to move in the right direction, yeah. then, then Matt's and my relationship began to be restored as fathers and sons. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and my relationship with my daughters yes, is equally right. That's right. uh, you know, uh, restored because I, yes. I began to get it right. I began I to understand that. God's priorities that, yeah. for family and community, yeah. for father and son, and for son father and daughter, mother and That's son right. and mother and daughter. That's right. And I think it is that family, yeah. that broader family, that we, that we really are trying to, to bring together. And, and Matt's work restoring young, uh, young people and elders mm -hmm. to right relationship yeah. is, I think, a reflection of, of, of our own journey. Yes and his own journey, yeah. um, of what it means to be created in the image and likeness of God as indigenous people, mm -hmm. as men, as women, 
as fathers, as sons, as mothers, as daughters, and, and, and to explore that and, and really take a hold of that. So, so that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> I'm so glad that you came here today. And uh, you explained it very well concerning the family life. It is definitely, family are very important in the eyes of God, our Absolutely. Father. And uh, He is our everything. We, we, we look through the eyes of Jesus because of Jesus that's living in our hearts. And uh, when the Father talks, we obey. Now the same thing, uh, while we're having the Father and Son's relationship, we have, we've listened to many uh, uh, ministers ministering the word of God, but if you have spent time present, uh, if you have spent uh, time, uh, uh, many time in the presence of God, you can listen also to our Heavenly Father that is called God, the Father of all nations. And uh, I'm so glad that you have explained to them concerning, especially that God is a creator. I don't know why, but I just feel before we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna ask you just to end with a prayer. But I just want to read this uh, concerning, uh, um, uh, no, no, not this one, sorry. Um, if you've got a Bible, you can just go to the very first book of uh, uh, Genesis, uh, that God has created us all in His likeness. Verse 26, very first chapter, it says here, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So, it says here, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then, this is what God done. He, then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Over the fish, over the uh, the fish of the sea, sorry, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You see, this is so important to know the word of God and to listen what God is saying to you through His word. And if you live and abide in Him, the word of God says in the book of John 15, if we abide in Him, He will surely abide in us. But then you must become a born again Christian. Uh, if I say a born-again Christian, I mean that you must become a born-again believer. Believe that, that Jesus Christ, the true Son of God, has died for all. Not just for the Jewish people. Yes, he has come from the Jewish nation, but he died for all nations. And that is why we are born. We believe that he died. We believe that he has ro uh, rose again the third day. And we believe also that he has ascended into heaven. And that he is seated at the right hand of the Father, but are interceding for all of us. And then he's living in our hearts when you invited him into your heart. And that is what we have done. And uh, uh, as um, Terry has men mentioned, I was going to call you Pastor Terry. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. You must cut here. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I I don't know, like titles. I know, yeah. All right, fine. I can call it. You know, because there's something that I wanted to say. Yes, no, you lost my bad. Um, so you really must just cut here. <laughs> <laughs> we all we at the end actually. Um, I always end off like this concerning the word to bring the word out here. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna start over again. Yeah, so this is what I've read to you concerning the book of Genesis, and it's important I've talked to you about also the book of John, uh, where, where it says that we must abide in, 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 in God, and the word of God says if we abide in him, he will abide in us. And that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father. So just surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, because he's, He is our everything. Am I right here, Terry? Indeed. And uh, we are just here to spread the gospel and to, come, to tell you, it doesn't matter what tribe or tongue or nation you are, because the God whom we serve is a blessed God, He's a blessed Savior, and He blessed us right from the beginning of the time when He has made the, all the nations, and everyone is made in His image in this, gener in this generation. Mm -hmm. Terry, I'm thankful that you are here today. Is there anything that you want to add? Well, I think it's important because you've read Genesis 1. It's important to, to, to read it and realize when God said, let us make man in our image, yeah. um, and, and then the word them. It's a yeah. plural. Yeah. So man does not mean male at that point. Yeah, man right. means humankind. That's right. And male and female, he created them, yes, humankind. Right. That's right. We often fall into the myth and understand that man-male was yeah. created first. Actually, mankind That's 
That's right. Male and female in Genesis chapter 1. That's right. And I think it's important because it helps women understand that they are not subservient to men. Yeah. But they are created in the equal image and likeness of God as men. Yeah. Male and female, he created them. So I think that's really important because yeah, that helps yeah. us understand family very, very much, much better, better. Much, much, better. much, much yeah. better. Because God talks of himself mm. in the plural. Mm. Let that's us. Right. Let us. He didn't say. Let yeah. us. And we understand the us mm. as Father, Son, and Holy that's Spirit. Right. Amen. So when we realize man is mankind yeah. and them is plural, yeah. meaning male yeah. and female yeah. right. at the same time right. and the process of that is defined in genesis 2 yeah. but it's one human being yes. divided into male and female That's right. yeah. it's really important to understand that yeah. and, and sometimes we're taught differently yes i would just say uh it's important for people to see that jesus the person and work life teaching death and resurrection of jesus bring us to the fulfillment of his intent and purpose for yeah. us as human beings That's right. in this earth That's right. and that only he does that yeah but he does that by taking who he made us to be yes and making us fulfilled that is so right yes. he doesn't want to eradicate who you are <laughs> and replace you yeah. with something else but he wants to take who he made you to be yes. and bring you to the fulfillment so of his right. purpose and that intent so, right, yes. so father we do pray yes uh, that you would help us as we've uh, been on this television program and talked to these people, that you would help us to understand that your purpose for each of us is to fulfill us, to make us exactly who you intended for us to be by taking who you made us and bringing us to completion in the person of Jesus, through the person of Jesus, by the work of Jesus. Help each person who's seeing this program today. Uh, who has questions about that, yes. to realize they are created in the image and likeness of God, Amen. male and female, Excellent. in the image and likeness of God, and that God's desire is to fulfill and complete them, make them all that He has intended for them to be. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.